sit up straight. Okay, hi again. It's uh, Greg Michaels with K12EducationMatters.org, and we are here with Donna Lynn Miller, the book whisperer. And I just want to, we've got her at the end of a conference day, so we're all tired, but I just wanted to say thank you, Donna Lynn, for giving us just a minute here. And uh, you get asked all kinds of questions, and I guess I just wanted to know, you know, what's, what surprises you the most about what kids are reading these days for the past? Well, I think kids are reading a lot more than adults are. Uh, we, we talk a lot about how kids are not reading, but I, I see kids that are reading a lot these days, and I think that's promising news. Uh, we used to think that the peak years for reading were about 8 to 14, and now we're seeing that trend higher. I think we owe a lot of that to Harry Potter. Kids who grew up with Harry Potter and are now in college are still reading. Uh, so to me, that's evidence that if you have one great reading experience, you really can become a reader. As far as my sixth graders, one of the things that I've noticed lately is, is books that were really popular five or six years ago, like Maniac McGee or The Thief Lord or books that I would say were fairly innocent books for fifth and sixth graders to read, my students don't want to read them. They want to read edgier things. They all want to, it, it shocks me when kids come into my classroom in sixth grade and they've already read all four Twilight books because I just don't really see those books mm -hmm. as being content appropriate mm -hmm. for 10 and 11 year olds, but they have read them. And so they're wanting to read edgier things, things that have more sophisticated content than perhaps we might think they're emotionally ready for at times. And, and that does prove a challenge for teachers and how do we balance the interests of the kids with their emotional maturity and helping them pick out books that still provide them something that they'd be interested in reading and yet we're not pro exposing them to things they're not emotionally prepared for. So that's a challenge. Yeah, I guess that is a challenge because there's all s there's leveled books and the fountain of Subpanel leveling and all that sort of thing, but then there's also does the kid want to read it or not or what their interests are. So that's always the balance we have to make. Well, I, I was just looking at what the true reading levels were of some of the young adult books that have been out. And, you know, young adult is really geared for 12 and up, but it could be a book that's really 15 and up. We almost need a PG-13, although I don't think publishers would necessarily want that kind of rating system for books. But uh, YA is a big range. Books that are appropriate for a 12-year-old wouldn't interest an 18-year-old necessarily, and books that are geared more towards high school kids, 12-year-olds shouldn't really be reading. So looking at the, I just went and looked at the Lexiles of a bunch of YA books, especially books that I thought really skewed towards older kids, and the Lexiles on many of those books is upper elementary. So if you were just matching kids by Lexiles, well, you know, cuss words aren't that long. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they don't go that high on a lexile. <laughs> yeah. And so I think we just have to be smart. We we have to be knowledgeable about the books that we're putting in front of kids and really understand, uh, especially looking at books that are geared towards older kids, whether or not the content's appropriate and and uh, we're there to guide them and to provide them with literature that meets them where they are, not just at their reading level, but also where they are emotionally. Yeah, that's the key thing, I think, is just treating teachers as professionals. I was mm -hmm. talking with Max Brand earlier a little bit about that, and I think that uh, this is off topic, I guess, but the, the pendulum seems to have swung a little bit where we used to trust teachers more a little bit than I think we're doing right at the moment, but okay, I guess that will resolve itself in time. But, uh, well, we hope that teachers are knowledgeable about books. It's not just about having books in our room, but it's about using those books as a way to build community, to develop relationships mm -hmm. with kids, and also to advance them academically. Yep, exactly. Well, Donna Lynn, I'd appreciate it. Just, just a couple ends of a couple minutes at the end of a busy day, and I really appreciate your time. Well, thank yeah. you for inviting me. Oh, certainly. Thank you. That was the.